Anthony for some very exciting chat with our two guests, Ed Spilliers and Joanne Froggart. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Hello. for having us. Welcome to Anna and Jimmy. <laughs> um, uh, now, last Sunday's Downton Abbey, <coughs> very dramatic. Mm. We've got to start with the huge um, event that happened. You dropped a pot of jam. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that about? Just a bit clumsy. Clumsy. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but really, that was a re that was a really dramatic event. Um, and obviously, I have to ask you about that, Joanne, because yeah. um, uh, it's accidental timing that we've done this event, and it's a few days after one of the most dramatic storyline you've ever done, obviously. It is, it is, it is purely accidental, actually, because, uh, you know, I did this with you last year yes. before it as well. So, um, yeah, um, but, but, you know, it's good timing because it's, it's good to be able to, to talk about the, you know, the storyline that's just broken yeah. and, um, and discuss that. So. Yeah, so my first question about that is, when you were first told that this was going to happen... What was your reaction? Well, I actually um, went to see Gareth Neem, our exec producer, because I was being very nosy about what storylines I would have in season four. Um, and this was about a week before we got the scripts. And I said, Gareth, I can't wait. I want to know what I do. And he was like, I'd really rather you read it in the script because it's really fantastic. And I said, well, if it is really fantastic, I really, I really want to know what it is. So he, he said, OK, well, I'll tell you. And he told me, and I think my, my jaw actually did drop open. I thought, wow, you know, I, wasn't, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, and obviously, as an actress, I was really thrilled to be able to given to be given the opportunity to, you know, play such challenging scenes. And um, then, when I read the scripts uh, a week later, I was even more thrilled with the way Julian had written it, um, and uh, the, you know the the consequences that follow, which we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, I think he's pitched beautifully, and mm. you know, and it felt like a a huge responsibility to get this right, yeah, you know, for, for, yeah. for lots of reasons, so. Were you surprised about the, the coverage in the papers and all of that, and the, that I mean, there were some complaints, bearing in mind it's watched by at least 12 million people, I think there's about 60 complaints so far, which doesn't seem that many. Yeah. But even that, you know, the papers covering all of that, and the response on Twitter, you, are you surprised by all of that? Um, I think we all knew there, there would be um, a, a bit of controversy with the storyline, because Anna and Bates are, are, are very well-loved characters. Um, but I didn't quite expect it to be uh, quite as controversial as yeah. it has been. Um, but I hope that means we've done a believable job because yeah. it is, it, it's a very serious subject matter and one that I'm actually very proud that the, sh that the show is, is um, you know, broaching. So, um, you know, so hopefully as the episodes develop and the story develops, people will you know, understand the reasons for it and, and understand sure. the emotional journey that mm. Anna and Bates are going to go on. And Anna has suffered a lot. I mean, you know, yeah, let's face it. Yeah, she's had a hard time with you this do debate. A, you have to do a lot of crying and all yeah. of that. And, and now this, <laughs> this must be the, uh, even the ultimate in suffering. I mean, yeah. when you're, I mean, in terms of the <coughs> scenes, the scene that we saw at the end um, of the last episode where obviously you're in a huge state of distress, is that, how difficult is that to get yourself into that state of... Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit of work. Um, I, you know, I am a, a little bit method when it comes to emotional oh, yeah. scenes. I can't kind of just have a laugh and a joke one second and then go and break my heart the next. I do have to kind of psych myself up a little bit. But I must say, you know, Catherine Mooreshead, our um, director for episodes three and four, who's our first female director as well, did a, a brilliant, brilliant job. And we worked very closely together along with Nigel and Brendan um, to you know, plan the story, to really get our heads around what this means, what this means for a woman in, in those times. Mm. Um, and so I felt incredibly supported on set um, you know, by the cast, and, and especially by our crew, actually, who were incredibly respectful and um, you know, really, um, as I say, supported, supported me and, and did a brilliant job sure. with me. So uh, you know, it felt like a real team effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now just to bring you in, I mean, I think a lot of people have been saying you know, that Downton is cosy viewing and, you know, they love, it's <coughs> kind of escapist in a way. But it's always dealt with issues, doesn't it? It's always dealt with, there was, you know, second series, there's a lot of stuff in the First World War and the, there's death. And so were you surprised when you knew this was coming? What was your reaction to it? Um, I think it's, uh, it's in a testament to, to Julian and the show to, to be brave uh, and to, to, to put this kind of subject matter out there. But I think it's an important story to be told because it's still very re relevant today. And I think, you know, that, that kind of subject matter, people are going through that today and aren't even reporting it now and aren't coming forward. So I, I, don't, I think it was, it was sort of directed very well, it was performed brilliantly, and it was edited in a way that wasn't 
wasn't so, you know, so in your face. And I thought it was executed perfectly, really. Um, yeah. And I think, it, like I say, it's a testament to everyone involved, really. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of, did you do much research about, you know, what might happen to women in that situation that time? Or did Julian discuss that with you? Yeah, I did do quite a lot of research. Um, just, you know, I read a lot of um, things online, actually, about, you know, as Ed just mentioned, about women who've been through similar situations in, in modern times and not reported it to the police and the reasons they didn't. And often it's because they feel, um, you know, their story comes across as slightly vague when giving it to a third party or it happened at a party when they'd had a drink or it happened with somebody they knew. And th they often, the overwhelming first feelings that, that I read about were confusion of, Sure. You know, um, this mixture of emotions and, and did I, you know, did I ask for this or did, you know, and that's in this day and age. So to take that, yeah. you know, nearly a hundred years previously to a woman, you know, in the early part of, of the previous century, um, you know, I had to get my head around that. And that was very important mm. as well. And uh, Alistair Bruce, our historical advisor, was, was very good at talking me through that and saying, you know, uh, you know, what, what I needed to keep in my head was that for a woman in that time, in the early 1920s and previously, really all she had was her reputation, you know, her career possibly, yeah. and her family. So if she loses her reputation, she loses everything and brings shame upon the house she works in. She loses her job. In Anna's instance, you know, her husband could be either sent to prison if he tries some course of revenge yeah. or, you know, he, he could disown her in some way because he, he doesn't feel he can handle it and you know oh we God, were I still hope all these things don't happen <laughs> oh. <laughs> well i have to wait and see oh, I can't take but them. um but yes i mean still in you know we're, we're in that age where you know women didn't have a lot of rights mm. and 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 men were you know the superior you know beings they were yeah. that's how they were seen by society oh. and, and even other women within the the local village would have gone you know would have had the view of oh well she must have done something to bring that on or there's no smoke without fire so it's very shocking actually when when you think of that yeah um so that was important for me to get my head around you know for the reasons why she can't she feels she really cannot tell anybody mm. about this because it brings such shame on her that's mm. how she feels you know hopefully in this day and age we know that's not the case but you know yeah. but back then well we've got a clip i think of um of uh, the next episode to see some of because i guess some people are jumping in and talking about what they feel about the storyline now. But mm -hmm. I guess the aftermath is, is in a way the really important bit. And we've got a clip now to see some of that yeah. from the next episode. So let's have right. a look. So presumably this is going to play out through the whole series. Or just the series or something. Yeah, obviously, you know, obviously there's, there's a, lot to, uh, a lot to explore with the emotional journey of, of what happens next and, the, and of the effect it has on Anna and, and therefore the effect it has on Bates because... Um, you know, she doesn't feel she can tell Mr. Bates mm. what's happened because of, you know, all the reasons sh she's worried about his future. And she's worried about how he'll react as well. But then she, f she feels she can't be emotionally close to him either or physically close to him. So, of course, that, that brings problems as well. So, yeah, th there's a huge knock-on effect that we, d we do explore in great depth. Cool. I'm interested to see, see what happens. So, Ed, turning to, uh, to your character, um, what can you say? I mean, I know I, I, I've been taught to mention the words by a friend of mine, love quadrangle. That's one thing <laughs> that might be coming up uh, this series. And certainly you're very flirty and... Uh, what, now? Or? Very flirty <laughs> now, always, <laughs> and in the show. And you're dashing flirtiness. That's going to come out, isn't it, more and more, I feel, as, as time goes on. What would you like to say about that? Uh, there is a love quadrangle, um, or rhombus, that's been sort of continuing <laughs> from last, your last year a bit. Uh, I think from Jimmy's point of view, David Evans and I just directed uh, episodes one and two. We discussed very early on that perhaps the idea for Jimmy, why he's starting to show interest in Ivy, is nothing other than he might just be a little bit bored. Right. He might be a bit, sort of feels like he's a bit cooped up in this house. You know, he, he's the sort of guy who in his head is quite ambitious and uh, he wants to be out seeing things, doing things. He loves his music. And yeah, yeah he is quite a flir flirty sort of party sort of young chap, I suppose. But I think the idea that he's cooped up in this house all day long, taking orders from Carson, I think it grinds him down a little bit. Really? So yeah. any opportunity to, you know, flirt with a young lady, I, I think he's quite happy yeah. about that. And you spent most of last year, of course, kind of escaping the uh, advances 
of Thomas. Mm -hmm. how, that, that was an interesting storyline for you. I guess, in a way, how is that for you? Because it, it, it's interesting that you end up, you're, you're being quite homophobic in a way, or you know, literally, you know, in that time, you would mm. have been scared probably of that kind of violence. How was that playing that storyline? Well, that was quite a tricky storyline to play. I mean, I was very lucky because that was my first, my first series and it was my first major storyline. So I was very lucky to have that. Um, but I, I mean, there were some difficulties with playing that mainly again down to the sort of the time the time you know yeah. the time period it's very you know it's very difficult to uh, sort of turn around to your you know your your bosses and say you know i'm having advances from a gay man you know it has such massive ramifications um, homosexuality in that time period you know men went to prison for for being found out for being gay so if if yeah. you're reporting that or being seen to be involved in some, something like that it could it could it could be very grave for, yeah. for, for jimmy so it was quite a difficult thing to sure. get the balance right as in you know who do i talk to about this how do i go about it i need to keep my job i need to so it was it was a tricky position yeah. for him to be in when the camera t was turned off was it fun doing those those scenes with uh, Rob and that kind of thing. And, and when the know. camera's turned off, are you saying we were kissing uh, when the camera's turned off? No, I'm asking. <laughs> That's my question, yeah. Yeah. How much fun did you have? <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of fun being an actor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a vision of like the younger members of the cast having, like, you know, going out for a drink after filming. Is that, does that happen? Like, just I don't do you, drink. Oh, don't uh, you? No. No. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't know why I don't believe that. <laughs> But um, do you do you socialise together, or is it all? Is it all? There's, there's been there's one or times. two nights yeah, out. There's a few there? occasions, yeah. I mean, but we're very sort of professional, um, oh, professional. strong-minded people. It's all about the job in hand. Of so course. you know, we wouldn't do anything like that. Of course. But Joe likes red wine. Okay. Only when we're off duty. <laughs> <laughs> That's why men off duty, totally off duty. <laughs> well, let's talking of your romantic advances. Well, I think we've got another clip uh, featuring you from from the next episode. So let's have a look at this. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Good cut there, just before the <laughs> key moment. You step in. Do you like side, you know, get sideways and dodge that, or, or do you? How much do you want to tell us about? We have to watch on Sunday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will have to watch. On yeah. Sunday. yeah, yeah. Are, is your, are you jealous of all the cooking that you know Ivy and Alfred do? They both want to be cooks. They're very they? good cooks. They've yeah. got something to. That's that. You're talking about the board thing that you you need a hobby. <laughs> yeah, well, I, th I think you need something to be good at. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I mean, I. I, I, I yeah, I think he. W I think there is an element of jealousy involved with with Alfred. Certainly, um, you know, Alfred is is aspiring to do do certain things, and I, I think Jimmy finds that quite frustrating in itself. Yeah. So any opportunity he can to belittle him, he he will do that. Yeah. Going back to when you were first cast in the role, joining this mm. by then it was already a huge phenomenon. How was it when you first arrived, kind of in this world of all these other actors in a, in such a massive show? It was intimidating because, like you say, it, it it had established itself so well both here and across the pond. Um, but I mean, you're working with really lovely people all the time, and people do bring you in. Uh, but I think it's important in any job you go into, you've got to have a, an element of pressure on your shoulders, otherwise you don't take it seriously enough. And you know that's the same with acting. And it was a good chance for me to really try and you know, muscle my way in there and, and show what I could try and do. But th like I said, there's wonderful people to be working with and it's a good it's a good drama school for me. I never went, so it was a great place for me to learn. You know, you're watching, you know, working with people like Joe and Maggie yeah. and, and Jim Carter. <laughs> <laughs> and you are sitting next to you at the moment. <laughs> great actor. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. no, but of course, and it's, I'm being serious, and yeah. especially like downstairs, it's a real melting pot. It's a great place, you know, and I know that Matt Milne thinks the same. It's a great place for us to sit and watch and bounce with other people and really enjoy the experience. So no, I'm, I'm thrilled I've been, I've been a part of it so far, so I'm, I'm glad I did get the, get the and I think it's safe to say that you are a big sex symbol on the show. How, how do you react to He's that? He's the kind James of Dean. He is the James Dean. Thank you. Abbey. Thank you. You are the James <laughs> Dean. That's it now. James Dean <laughs> of Downton Abbey forever. How does that feel to be uh, the object of our lust? <laughs> Is that going too far? <laughs> Sorry. Is that going too far? I, feel I wouldn't like I feel to comment I feel on you're that. Uh, I feel you're interrupting something at the moment, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't really know how I feel about that. I think for me, <laughs> me it's it's more important that if people think I'm delivering a good character mm. and believe in the character and think that that is uh, and they're interested in what I'm doing as an actor, that's far more important. If there's people like anything else, then that's that's lovely too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bonus. One more thing about you being is I was saying to you before. I was, I was watching Sky movies the other day and stumbled across a film you were in um, called Love Bites, which features extensive nudity, Ed. Of, of, do you remember? It's not that kind of movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> just putting it out there. Um, yeah, I, I had to run around a lot with my backside out um, yeah. around the streets of Glasgow in November a couple of years ago. Yeah. Ooh. Happy, happy to do that. Was, was it well, I'm it? doing Downton now as a result, <laughs> yeah. so there you go. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Right. I didn't get my bum out for no reason. No. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
Downton doesn't have many gratuitous uh, nude scenes, does it? Is, is it something, you know, you kind none. of... None. No, no. Yeah. No, effectively, no. No, no. There's, been, there's been some uh, raunchy moments in the past. This, there's a lot of sort of suggestiveness, which yes. I think is sort of more intelligent sometimes. Mm. Right, right. Now, when you, uh, this is a question for both of you. Uh, before, so I'm going to pass it open to you guys if you think you have any questions you have for our, our two guests here. Um, but do you... Uh, there's so many characters now. There's, there's new characters brought in every series. Do you both get the scripts? How does it work? Do you get the scripts and you're looking for what happens to you? I mean, you talked about how your particular role, your, your, your particular storyline this year, you were told what's happening. But do you look at the scripts thinking, right, what's happening to me? And, or do you just read the whole thing and think, oh, this is how the series is going? Um, I mean, a bit of both. I think it's, you, you read everything because you're part of this thing. You want to know how every episode pans out, how the series pans out, what's happening to other characters, how that's relevant to your character. But obviously you do... I mean, quite often I have a quick flick through. All oh, right, he's doing that. Okay, and then I go back to the beginning and read it all properly. And I think, um, but you want to know the stories. It's important that you get a real sense of everything that is, is happening to everybody else because it is a, you know, the upstairs doesn't work without the downstairs and vice versa. It's a proper mechanism that's always moving. And people do bounce off each other and stories fall into other people's stories. It's really, really important to be acutely aware of what else is going on, I think. Is it hard to keep a secret what's happening? Because I mean, your your storyline on Sunday, I know, wasn't we the press? We weren't shown it. Um, we weren't allowed to watch it. Every normally every week, we given we get to see it a few days in advance. But we obviously, we weren't allowed to. That mm. kind of secret, a big thing that's happening to you. Do you have to keep that secret from your family and friends and all of that? Pretty much, my husband knows about it because he helps me learn my lines. And if we get halfway through a scene, he'll he'll kind of all of a sudden go, "Oh no, now I know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh no, is this what happened?" So, but I didn't even tell my parents. No, oh, I really, really, I'm so scared of, of of you know being the one that that lets something out that um, I, I really don't tell anybody at wow. all. Yeah. Wow. So. Um, but you just feel a responsibility. You don't want, you know, people to find out before because it does spoil things. It spoils stuff for the viewers and it, and it spoils it for us. And, you know, you want to, you want, you know, all the viewers and to get that reaction that we get when we get our scripts and we open them and go, oh, my goodness, such and such is happening. Um, and that's part of the drama and, p and part of the fun of it. So, so what's the reaction from your parents from, from recent episodes? Um, well, all my family have been quite distraught on Sunday night. Yeah, bless. I had lots of calls. <laughs> I had to ring around and go, I'm fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, but yeah, no, they were, they, you know, they were obviously pleased with me, but, but, but yeah, quite, you know, quite surprised. And yeah. um, I, did I did give them a little warning right. of tonight's episode may not right. be particularly nice viewing. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, n none of them second guessed what that would be. No, so. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they were a little shocked. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of, um, of uh, what's coming up and in terms of the so how big the show has become, Ed, what is it like being in a show It's watched by 12 million, at least 12 million people? It's, it's basically the biggest show on TV these days. I mean, it includes X Factor and all of that. So how yeah. do people deal with you and talk on the street and all of that? Do you get treated differently? Uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel I get treated particularly differently. I mean, people are always pretty nasty to me, so... I don't feel there's a massive change. I mean, I, I, I've noticed a change. I've just been in America recently, and there's quite a, it's quite overwhelming how the casting directors are with you there. They ask you about 100 questions about Downton Abbey rather than actually asking about anything else to do with you. It's all about right. Downton Abbey and I c they're asking me questions about characters I can't even answer. So, um, <laughs> about what Mrs. Patmore's cooking right now and I, 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 I haven't got that answer so <laughs> I'm, 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 I have to say to them. Right. But no, I mean, I, you, I, it's, it's amazing to be part of something like this and, and long may it continue. Because it is huge in America, isn't it? Yeah, you keep bigger that. Yeah, you stop I mean, the America pressure on. Particular. Sorry, what? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> But so, do you think it's, it could be a you know the starting point of, of big things out there? Would you like to do stuff out there? Uh, I think any actor would be lying if they didn't uh, admit to saying they'd like to do things in America because you know there is a lot of work out there and there's a, there's a you know I mean Los Angeles is a city that's dedicated to making movies and television so of course I'd love to have that opportunity but I'm perfectly happy working away at the moment and if that comes my way then I'll be an even luckier person. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure there are loads of questions um, from the audience, so uh, I'm going to... There's, I think there's some roving mics, so when I, if, if, I, uh, if you do have a question, uh, the mic will come to you and we'll say we'll uh, get to you. There's a yeah, lady just back there. Hi. First, both of you are spectacular, and thank you for bringing such wonderful drama to our living room. Um, for Joanne, two questions. Um, one, the character of Anna and Bates, what is the age difference? <laughs> and two, um, what, as a child, what was the Masterpiece Theatre 
series that caught you? Um, okay, so question number one. <laughs> it's a little bit vague, the, the age difference between Anna and Bates. Um, I think it's, it's probably, you know, it, I mean, there is a big age of it. I think it, it's probably about 16, 17 years, something like that. You know, that there is, there is a, a bit of a gap there between the characters. That's how we started off. You know, I'm not sure as the series have gone on how we're supposed to have aged, particularly. <laughs> we might, I might have caught up with him a little bit, but now I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, um, and in terms of uh, masterpiece shows, well, obviously, we, we don't get PBS here, and we, we don't get the masterpiece stuff, but, but I guess in terms of um, British drama that, that I watched when I was um, younger, I remember, I don't know whether this was on masterpiece or not, but um, a drama called Band of Gold, uh, yeah. which was probably on when I was about... 13, I think, or 13, 14, um, an ITV drama that Samantha Morton was one of the stars of and amongst other people, and Kathy Tyson. And, um, and that was something I watched um, and was blown away by the, um, the grittiness and the reality of the performances, especially by Samantha Morton. Um, and that's something that certainly stood out. I guess being that age, it was the first time I'd been allowed to watch anything like that because it was quite a dark show, really. Um, so, yeah, that, that certainly sticks out in my mind of kind of going, oh, that, that's impressive. I'd, I'd like to be as good as her one day. Mm. Thank you. Is there anything you like growing up? Any, what, what kind of TV did you watch when you, when you growing were growing up? Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, because I, I had a scary f feeling you might ask me that. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, there's one series that was actually, it wasn't so much when I was growing up, it was when I actually first started <coughs> doing, like, well, acting. I, I was recommended a series to watch as a sort of, as a case study. Our friends from the North. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. And I found that was a very, yeah, yeah, yeah. very powerful thing to be watching. Yeah. Well, they are two classic shows, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Right, uh, yes, a uh, lady just there. Uh, my question is for Joanne. Hello. Um, um, obviously, Bates just got let out of prison at the end of series three, so they haven't had much time together since. So, how will their relationship develop in series four? Um, well, this is a difficult question because I'm not allowed to tell you anything. <laughs> but um, obviously, you know, with with what's what we've seen has just happened in in episode three. Um, there's there's a lot to overcome for Anna and Bates, for Anna personally, um, and and this, you know, shows a, a different side to Anna because she's obviously you know really broken by what's happened um and she feels she can't connect with mr bates or anybody else really um you know after this so um so that's a different side to her that, that we've never seen before um you know throughout all their trials and tribulations uh, previously she's you know she's been able to be positive and and be the the you know, the positive-minded, well, you know, there's got to be a way forward where we do see her lose an element of her positivity and, and, and see her, you know, um, you know, lose that about herself, really. So, um, and because Mr. Bates doesn't know what's happened to her at the moment, then there's, um, you know, there's, there's difficulty there because he doesn't understand why she's, she's you know, um, you know um, not being close with him and, and, and why she's... Well, she's not herself, really. So, yeah, so there's quite a journey for them to come. Very skillfully handled, that was, yes. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gentleman there. I'll come over this side soon. Sorry, don't worry. <laughs> um, I have a question for both of you. Um, I understand that the Middleton family actually made a visit to the Downton set. Ah. Um, what was it like having them on set? I gather he even baked you a cake. I, I, um, I didn't bake her a cake. <laughs> I mean, would have done, but I, yeah. I didn't. Well, they uh, did make a visit on set. Um, I, I can see by Ed's look in his eye that I he wasn't I, there that I day, I and I was neither was I. I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we, I would have loved to have met them, but um, I don't know about the cake situation. <laughs> but, um, but I know they did have lunch with some of the cast and, did and they? hopefully enjoyed the day. Yeah, I'm not sure what series of that th was though. Maybe it was series two. We uninvited, really? un uninvited, not. On I, know, well, I was very they just mingled with. They just mingled with the upstairs. Oh, yeah, I exactly. See. I was oh, very right, disappointed. Okay. We, we weren't invited. Right. <laughs> it sounds like you're both sort of royalists and you know big fans of the royal family. Oh, um, oh, oh, political. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to get you in trouble. Yeah. No, I think you know. I think. Absolutely, I think you know, with, especially in in recent years with the royal wedding and now the royal baby and the jubilee, um, you know, I think it's been a great thing for Britain. Actually, I think it's really, you know, we, we've had a big community spirit from from the royals again, and, and obviously William and Kate and Harry have have really brought the royals back into the the public hearts. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they do a good job. 
Ed, any comment to make about the Royals? <laughs> I think baby George is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Good work. Let's go over this side. This I think there is some with a mic over this side, hopefully. Unless I made it. Ah, good. Yes. So, uh, uh, Lady Yeah, they're in the, f kind of effectively the front row. Um, if you could go back in the past and select one person from Downton, Downton that you could be, who would you choose? Well, apart from last Sunday, Anna Bates. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, it's difficult, it's difficult. Well, I, I love Mr. Molesley, but I guess I wouldn't really want to be Mr. Molesley because everything always goes wrong for yeah. Molesley. But I do have a soft spot for Mr. Molesley, but, but maybe I'd like him as a friend or a next-door neighbour rather than <laughs> being him myself. I like Mr. Molesley, yeah. You want him to do well. Him to get, yeah. <laughs> thank you. And just behind, lady just behind, if you pass the mic, thank you. Hello, this is for Joanne. Um, show my age here, but I remember you from Coronation Street. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, obviously, a lot of people do kind of think that <coughs> being in a soap is kind of, you know, not as prestigious as being in sort of what you're doing now in Downton. But how do you think being in a soap has helped in terms of doing something like Downton, in terms of the turnaround and in terms of the sort of acting chops that you get? Because, obviously, Nigel Harmon was there last week as well in yeah in downtown, yeah so. absolutely well um <clears throat> you know for for me certainly um you know because I was I was in Coronation Street when I was 16 and I'm a little bit older than that now <laughs> um so uh, yeah I left I left kind of 16 years ago I left Corrie so it's half my life ago and I, you know I was I was a, a kid really when I did it but for me it was invaluable because it w that was my drama school I, d I didn't train at, at drama school I went to stage school at, at a younger age but um, and I really learned my work ethic there. Um, I learned about the technicalities of filming there. There is no time to rehearse. You know, you have to do your homework. Um, and I was lucky that I worked with, with really good actors that, that taught me that and encouraged me to, to go down that path. And um, so it's something I was really... It was a very happy time in my life, and I learned so much from it. I left when I was 18 years old, and... It, and you know, without that job, I wouldn't have got my agent now and I wouldn't have got, you know, the career that I've had for the past 16 years. So um, it was it was a fantastic first job for me. So, it's, you know, but but yes, I did have to I did feel like I had to work hard when I left to prove myself in different areas and, and prove that I was more than just a soap actress, which is disappointing because I think there is for some fantastic acting in soap. So. Thank you. Do you still watch Corey? Still yeah, I do from yeah. time to time. I have a couple of friends still there. So of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, oh, another Hi, this is a question for both of you. I know, um, Joanne, you mentioned that you, you know, did research for your storyline, uh, but I wanted to know what kind of character work you two do and how you get into character for the show. Okay. Uh, I mean, it <coughs> depends, really. It depends on what, where I'm having to go f uh, with the character. But um, f for the beginning of the show, to take on the new series, I because I knew I was going to be playing a Yorkshireman, I spent a bit of time in Yorkshire for a start. I went up to Ripon and Skipton, which is near where the the house is set. I just have to interrupt you for a sec because as a York, as a as a native Yorkshire girl, Ed has a brilliant Yorkshire accent. I have to say, it's very natural and it's it's yeah, it's spot on. So it worked. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I went up to Yorkshire. So I'm, uh, my granddad was a Yorkshireman as well, so I was quite. I, I felt it was quite a privilege to be playing a Yorkshireman. So I wanted to get it spot on. I mean, obviously, Ripon and Skipton has changed somewhat from 1920s, but I, I, it was a great way for me to soak up the atmosphere and soak up what it was like and get a sense of the countryside and, and, and how it looked. So that was one way of doing it. Um, and then from then, obviously, as we went into, as the character started to come towards, um, actually, shooting time came closer. I spent a lot of time with Alistair Bruce and talking about the idea that if, if a young man such as Jimmy was to be alive in the era he was, he would have been in the First World War. So a lot of my character development was thinking about the things I might well have seen in, in, in the war. And, and that sort of put a bit of pressure in my head, thinking, well, for example, when Carson is sometimes sort of berating me or a bit hard on me, in the back of my mind, it, well, I don't really want to be listening to you because you've no idea what I've witnessed. And, and so I'm trying to, tr trying to think of things like that in order to bring as much truth to the character as possible. Uh, trying to set yourself in situations that would have happened at the time. So looking at things that w would have been happening around then in order to, you know, yeah, like I say, bring a bit more realism to the character. That's interesting. Um, yeah, and for me, very sim similar but different. Um, when I first uh, got the role of Anna and we were about to start filming the first series, you know, the same as Ed, and I think any actor, you do what you need to do to get yourself within that mindset of, of that time and that character and that person and the experiences they would have had. So I, um, 
you know, although I, I knew obviously a little bit about the history and, and the history of women in those times, um, I watched a few documentaries on the time. I read um, a book called Keeping Their Place, which was um, a um, it, it was it was um, extracts of letters and diary entries from real life people. Um, servants to their employers and vice versa. So that was really good to give me a personal aspect on things. Um, and for me, being a female, it was really important to remember as, as a woman where we were in those times as well and, and the, the rights that we take for granted today that we didn't have because at the time we started Series 1 of Downton, women didn't have the vote, you know. Um, and even though that's just 100 years ago, you know, or thereabouts, it's... I found that quite surprising every day. The more I found out, I thought, goodness me, I keep forgetting that, you know, how far we've come in, in 100 years. And believe it or not, I actually had an, a couple of accent lessons to do a Yorkshire accent, even though that is my, <laughs> my real accent, <laughs> because they wanted it to be very period. So oh, really? when they said, we're going to send you for an accent lesson, I thought, I think I'll get this one. I think yeah. I'll be okay with this. But, um, but well, actually, that was very helpful. How different was the accent then, though? Was it w more kind of... It was more kind of, uh, you know, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Oh, okay. you, you pronounce your T's, you pronounce your yeah. H's, uh, it's posher, which are often a bit more dropped. Refined, I yeah, uh, more precise. Yeah. Uh, the the speech was was a lot slower, at, you know, to go with the pace of life. Maybe not for the servants, I guess. But um, so yeah, so that was interesting to, oh. to you know research as well. Very good. Front, yes. So um, we have a question from a <coughs> follower of the Downton Abbey Twitter oh, page. Excellent. Which is, what were your first impressions of each other? Oh. Oh. Very good. I don't know. Ed, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> what would your first be impre impressions be if you were sitting next to Joe? I mean, fantastic. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, the same. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I can't even remember the first time. Was it in the servants' hall? Oh, thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think probably first impressions... It was, it was the first servants' yeah, hall. It was yeah, it was the same. I don't know what your first impressions, impressions of the servants' hall were, but in the servants' hall, we can get quite raucous sometimes. So if anybody new comes in, it, it's, uh, it's quite exciting. It's we're, we're, yeah. like, <laughs> we're like eagles round it. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, oh, hello. So um, hopefully we were very welcoming yeah. and we're always excited. I was excited to, to go dancing so yeah. with you this year. Yeah, yeah, we had a oh, little dance yeah, this year. That was fun. Yeah, I yeah, enjoyed that. I enjoyed that too. That was good. We enjoyed that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yes, yes. Just a few, few paces along. Um, it's been touched on already, but, um, but as you said, there's been a handful of complaints. Do you think they obviously want Downton to be quite tame and quite friendly on a Sunday night, and obviously it was quite dramatic the other night and quite horrible to watch. Um, do you think they've got any sort of point, or do you think it's definitely the Downton's place to sort of throw a curveball that's a bit dramatic? Well, you know, uh, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, and everybody expects you know different things for, from from a show or, or, or from you know every experience so but ultimately Downton Abbey is a drama and it's you know it's on after the watershed it's on at nine o'clock and, and I feel certainly that we didn't show anything gratuitous or we didn't really show anything you know which was very much Julian's you know um Def definite, you know, wish that we w we would not depict that kind of violence against a woman on screen. You know, he wanted to tackle the issue, but without, you know, being gratuitous about it. So, um, I don't know how many complaints we get every week, but I think <laughs> we've done quite well to get only 60 out of, you know, nine and a half million views that we've seen it so far. So, um, you know, obviously, as I say, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but but I, I feel quite proud that I think we've handled it in the right way. Thank you. Time for a couple of more questions. Uh, let me think. I just want to make sure that it's not too different for the mic, but it's a lady there, and I will try and go one from behind the, the barrier. So, yes. Hi, <laughs> this is a question for both of you. What's it like working with Maggie Smith? I, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm you quite. Get more to yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have. I don't have. <coughs> a, actually, I've had dialogue with her before. I think. Have I? No, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm quite privileged because I get the crossover. So I'm, I'm you know, I, I'm spending a lot of time downstairs, but I spend a lot of time upstairs. And actually, the, the beauty of me being upstairs is, although I don't really have a lot to say, I get to watch people act. It's amazing. So I get to stand <laughs> in the background and watch. So Maggie Smith's having a close-up, and I'm just watching. I hope she ever never catches me because I, I look like I'm perving on her, and I'm not. I just think she's, I, 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 I just think she's amazing to watch. And she's so on it. She, you know, she's so on every time that camera's on her. She gives the minutest details, and that's what brings that character to life that you will see in a door, is, is the tiny things that she does. 
and, it, and it's all very subtle, but it's, her timing is, is impeccable. And I've got so much admiration for her, for a lady of, you know, not the, you know, of, of, a, of a great age who has been able to achieve so much and still deliver day in, day out, and work, the, you know, work six months of a year with us. I, you know, in those costumes, in those, in that hair, and everything. I think you know it's a real testament to anyone who can do that. I'd be a very, very happy man if I could go on as long as she could, mm. doing it the way she has. Yeah, very, very similarly to Edward. I mean, I don't get um, many scenes with Maggie at all. In fact, I think, I think Maggie's spoken to me once in the whole <laughs> four series, and I didn't reply. <laughs> 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 so um, unfortunately, I don't I don't get to spend a lot of time with Maggie. But as Ed says, when we do do the scenes where we're all together, you know, I love those days because you know <clears throat> I get to do the same thing. I get to watch Maggie and Penelope, and um, on days where we had Shirley MacLaine, and I was lucky enough to see Shirley and Maggie do a scene together. The first series she was there, and that was a really special moment, you know. And I love watching uh, Maggie and Penelope scenes together because, as as Ed said again, it's you know both their performances are always so detailed and um, it is like watching a masterclass, which is, you know, I feel very privileged to be able to do that. So, Thank you. And let's go to that lady just uh, behind the barrier and very patiently waiting. Sorry, I'm a little short, so that was a bit of a reach. Um, this is a kind of a question for both of you and it goes with the last one. Who on set are you most just in awe of being able to work with and who's the most fun to work with? That well, I'm the most fun. No, <laughs> um, no. Um, the most fun to work with. We've got a few fun yeah, ones, there's actually, there's haven't we? Ones. Yeah, there's quite a few. I'd say, um, yeah, uh, Brendan Coyle is certainly one. Siobhan Finneran, who unfortunately... Rob's quite a lot of fun. And, and Rob James Collier, yeah. yeah. You were a lot of fun. Am I? Yeah. Oh, good, thanks, Dad. Yeah, I'm Ed, of yeah. course. No, you had to say so, that yeah, I said yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we do have a lot of fun in the Servants Hall, don't yeah, we? Yeah, there's a lot of banter. But those there. three are, 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 you know, really bound to each other, and um, it was always really fun when the three of those were together. Um, in terms of who I'm in awe of, most, I guess, um, everybody in a way. You know, I think you learn things from everybody, but, you know, Maggie, Penelope, Shirley MacLaine, of course, incredibly exciting to, to work um, with three, you know, amazing women. Um, I love watching Jim. Mm, I love watching I Phyllis. Jim, yeah. um, you know, and I also really get a lot from some of the young characters that we get in that, have, you know, maybe their first or second job because they have such an enthusiasm and, and such, um, you know, a um, you know a need and, and a enthusiasm to get it right, and that's quite contagious as well. So, yeah, I enjoy watching everybody. Really, I think. You've got Paul Giamatti coming up as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to work with no. Paul at all. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it was him, another one of those days of yeah. oh, getting sorry. to stand and watch and okay. w watch someone deliver great detail. I mean, James Fox as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. I didn't even meet them. Well, I had Amazing. a very brief yeah. meeting with Paul at a, a screening, but bar that, I wouldn't have even got to meet him. So okay. I'm looking forward to seeing those scenes. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. Um, but thank you all so much. Thank you for some brilliant questions from you guys. Um, and thanks to Ed Spilliers and Joanne Froggart for coming. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thanks, thanks for having us. So, I mean, there were some complaints, bearing in mind it's watched by at least 12 million people. I think there's about 60 complaints so far, which doesn't seem that many. Yeah. But even that, you know, the papers covering all of that and the response on Twitter, you, are you surprised by all of that? Um, I think we all knew there, there would be um, a, a bit of controversy with the storyline because Anna and Bates are, are, are very well-loved characters. Um, but I didn't quite expect it to be uh, quite as controversial as yeah. it has been. Um, but I hope that means we've done a believable job because yeah. it is, it, it's a very serious subject matter and one that I'm actually very proud that the, sh that the show is, is um, you know, broaching. So, um, you know, so hopefully as the episodes develop and the story develops, people will, you know, understand. Ready for some very exciting chat with our two guests, Ed Spilliers and Joanne Froggart. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks Hello. for having us. Welcome to Anna and Jimmy. <laughs> um, uh, now, last Sunday's Downton Abbey, <coughs> very dramatic. Mm. We've got to start with the huge um, event that happened. You dropped a pot of jam. <laughs> 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 what, what was that about? Just a bit clumsy. Clumsy. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but really, there was, a re there was a really dramatic event. Um, and obviously, I have to ask you about that, Joanne, because yeah. um, 
Uh, is it accidental timing that we've done this? And the reasons for it and, and understand sure. the emotional journey that mm. Anna Bates are going to go on. And Anna has suffered a lot. I mean, you know, yeah, let's face it. Yeah, she's had a hard time with you Mr. Do, Bates. You have to do a lot of crying and all yeah. of that. And, and now this, <laughs> this must be the, the ultimate in suffering. I mean, yeah. when you're, I mean, in terms <coughs> of the scenes, the scene that we saw at the end um, of the last episode where obviously you're in a huge state of distress, is that... How difficult is that to get yourself into that state of... Uh yeah, it takes a little bit of work. Um, I, you know, I am a, a little bit method when it comes to emotional oh, yeah. scenes. I can't kind of just have a laugh and a joke one second and then go and break my heart the next. I do have to kind of psych myself up a little bit. But I must say, you know, Catherine Moorshead, our um, director for episodes three and four, who's our first female director as well, did a brilliant, brilliant job. So he, he said, OK, well, I'll tell you. And he told me, and I think my, my jaw actually did drop open. I thought, wow, you know, I wasn't, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, and obviously, as an actress, I was really thrilled to be able to, given, to be given the opportunity to, you know, play such challenging scenes. And um, then when I read the scripts uh, a week later, I was even more thrilled with the way Julian had written it um, and, the, you know, the, the consequences that follow, which we haven't seen yet. Um, you know, I think he's pitched beautifully and, mm. you know, and it felt like a, a huge responsibility to get this right, yeah, you know, for, for, yeah. for lots of reasons. So, were you surprised about the the coverage and the papers and all of that and the the event? And it's a few days after one the most dramatic storyline you've ever done, obviously. It is, it is. It is purely accidental, actually, because uh, you know I did this with you last year. Yes. Before as well. So, um, yeah. Um, but but you know it's good timing because it's it's good to be able to to talk about the you know the storyline that's just broken yeah. and um, and discuss that. So. Yeah. So my first question about that is. When you were first told that this was going to happen, what was your reaction? Well, I actually um, went to see Gareth Neem, our exec producer, because I was being very nosy about what storylines I would have in season four. Um, and this was about a week before we got the scripts. And I said, Gareth, I can't wait. I want to know what I do. And he was like, I'd really rather you read it in the script because it's really fantastic. And I said, well, if it is really fantastic, I really, I really want 